This summer, NASA will be sending the Parker Solar Probe on a mission to the sun, and we're going to find out more about it starting now. The sun is the closest star to Earth, and we know more about it than any star in the universe. But for all that we know about the sun, there are things about it we still don't understand. For example, the sun is surrounded by an extensive atmosphere called the corona. It extends out to millions of kilometers into space, and we can only glimpse the corona during a total solar eclipse. Oh my god! Wow! Holy crap! This is amazing! Anyway, while the sun is about 9,930 degrees at its surface, temperatures in the corona skyrocket north of millions of degrees. And that's weird. That's like backing up from a campfire and suddenly combusting. The corona is also the source of highly energetic solar flares and massive eruptions called coronal mass ejections, which can unleash billions of tons of matter at millions of miles per hour. Fortunately, Earth's magnetic field protects us from these dangerous particles, and we can see them slamming into the upper atmosphere as aurora. Changes in the solar wind and Earth's response to it are called space weather. And while space weather can make for spectacular auroral displays, it can also disrupt satellites, shorten their lifetimes, and even change their orbits. These are the same satellites that we rely on for essential operations like communication, navigation, hurricane monitoring, and HBO. A massive enough solar storm directed at Earth would knock out our electric grid, shut down the internet, and force us to actually have constructive and meaningful conversations with each other face to face like animals. However, if we could predict space weather, we could better protect our spacecraft and our astronauts or, at the very least, know how much time we have to finish binge-watching Game of Thrones before the end of modern-day civilization. Anyway, in order to forecast space weather, we need to understand just what is going on inside the sun's corona. And the only way to do that is to go there. That's why NASA is launching the Parker Solar Probe to the Sun this August. It's named after Eugene Parker, a solar physicist who developed ideas about the solar wind and other phenomena. NASA science missions are usually named after dead scientists like Hubble, Kepler, Chandra, Spitzer, and so on. But this time it's different because Parker is still alive. In fact, he just celebrated his 91st birthday on June 10th, and he's about to get the best set of birthday candles when his probe launches to the sun. But the sun is the hardest place in the solar system to get to. Why is that? Because Earth is traveling at about 30 kilometers per second. That means that in order to drop into the sun, you'd have to accelerate to 30 kilometers per second in the opposite direction. By comparison, Earth's escape velocity is only 11 kilometers per second. That means it's easier to get to Pluto than it is to get to the sun. So NASA will launch Parker on a Delta IV heavy lift rocket in August 2018. After separating from its upper stage, Parker will descend toward a gravity assist from Venus. Normally, we use gravity assists to accelerate spacecraft to the outer solar system, but it turns out you can also use gravity assists to slow down and descend into the inner solar system. Parker will make seven flybys of Venus over the next seven years to gradually shrink its orbit around the sun, coming as close as 3.9 million miles to the sun at perihelion. This is well within the orbit of Mercury, and it's about eight times closer than any spacecraft has ever gotten to the Sun before. Let's put it this way. If the distance from the Earth to the Sun were shrunk to the size of a football field, Parker would be just inside the four-yard line. Parker will make one orbit every 88 days, reaching a maximum speed at perihelion of about 430,000 miles per hour. That's fast enough to go from Philly to Washington, D.C. in one second. The sun's corona is anywhere from 1 to 2 million degrees, so Parker needs to use a specially designed carbon composite heat shield to protect itself. Temperatures on the sun-facing side of the shield will reach up to 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit, while the instruments behind the shield will operate at room temperature. So how come the shield only gets to 2,500 degrees? Isn't the corona 2 million degrees? Well, yes it is, but the corona is about 10 billion times less dense than air, so only a fraction of its particles will actually hit the shield. 
Still, Parker will be subjected to more than 500 times the sun's radiation here on Earth. That's more than enough to overload its solar panels. So Parker will automatically retract its panels as it approaches the sun. However, the tips of the panels are bent outward ever so slightly, allowing it to catch just enough sunlight to power the spacecraft. As Parker departs the sun, the panels will swing back out to keep things running. The solar panels are also going to use a gallon of pressurized water to keep them cool, a first for any spacecraft. For all of this to work, Parker will be a fully autonomous spacecraft, handling its own navigation, aiming its heat shield toward the sun, keeping the solar panels at the correct angle, and, oh yeah, doing science. Speaking of which, let's talk about what Parker will do as it buzzes the sun. The biggest question about the sun is why is its corona so much hotter than its surface? Temperatures suddenly jump from 10,000 degrees at the surface to millions of degrees in the corona. But why is this? Well, it could be a couple of reasons. It could be that there are shock waves of plasma rising from the surface and slamming into the atmosphere, releasing their energy as heat. Or it could be a bunch of tiny solar flares all over the sun that are constantly heating the corona. Or maybe it's some combination of the two. Or perhaps it's neither of these. The second question is what causes the solar wind? The solar wind is a steady stream of charged particles blowing outward from the sun. The solar wind can blow faster or slower depending on where it's coming from. There's a 1 million kilometer per hour wind coming from the sun's equatorial regions. Believe it or not, that's the slow wind. A much faster wind blows through magnetic holes in the corona's polar regions, and these can reach speeds of up to 3 million kilometers per hour. And if that wasn't strange enough, even the compositions of these two winds are different. So why is the corona so much hotter than the surface, and what's going on with that solar wind? To answer those questions, Parker is equipped with four science payloads. The FIELDS experiment will measure the electric and magnetic fields of the corona. Everything from sunspots to flares to coronal mass ejections are driven by magnetic activity and its interaction with plasma. Getting direct measurements of the magnetic and electric fields will go a long way toward helping us understand the complex origins of these phenomena. The Integrated Science Investigation of the Sun, or ISOAS, will observe energetic electrons, protons, and heavy ions that are accelerated to high energies in the corona. These are the same particles that form the solar wind and can blast Earth's magnetic field during solar storms. The Wide Field Imager for Solar Probe, or WISPR, is a set of telescopes and cameras that will take images of the solar corona and inner heliosphere. WISPR will make movies of the solar wind, shock fronts, and other structures as they approach and pass the spacecraft. In other words, we're going to see the solar wind as it flies by. How cool is that? Finally, the solar wind electrons, alphas, and protons, or SWEEP, will count the electrons, protons, and helium ions in the solar wind and measure their properties, such as velocity, density, and temperature. Parker is due to launch this August, and it's going to be another seven years before it reaches the sun and starts getting science data. But it's going to be worth the wait, and I'm pretty excited about what we're going to learn. So what are you looking forward to about this mission? What is it about the sun, or anything else, that you'd like to know about? Leave a comment below and I'll be sure to check it out. And if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and share this video with a friend, because you'll be making somebody's day and helping me to grow this channel. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.